Hey there everybody, uh, this is Cameron with the Sea Butters channel and I get have been getting this question a lot. What should I buy, the i5 version or the i7 version? So this is my attempt to answer this question. And in case you were wondering, um, I am using the Surface Pro 7 currently to record this using the new studio microphones just as a test of how well these studio microphones work. But uh, let's go ahead and get into it. Um, should you get the i5 version of the Surface Pro 7 or the i7? First, let's take a look at the differences. So on the i5 version, you're looking at a max boost rate on the processor of 3.7 gigahertz. And that comes with a six megabyte L3 cache, a 1.05 GPU max, 48 execution units on the GPU, and the i5 is fanless. And that does play a factor into your decision here, which we'll get to in a little bit. The i7 has a 3.9 gigahertz CPU max, 8 megabyte L3 cache, 1.1 gigahertz CPU or GPU max, and 64 execution units, and it does have an internal fan. So those are the only differences between the CPUs. Let's go ahead and look at the price points. So uh, your decision on buying an i5 versus an i7 is really going to come down to um, your storage requirements because that's the first thing you're going to start with. To start, if you need 16 gigabytes of RAM, you're already going to be at $1399. Um, or if you need 256 gigabytes of storage, you're going to be at $1199. The i7 versions start at $1499 over here so uh, let's look at the performance or sorry not the performance the the price point difference uh, between stepping up from an i5 to an i7 well if you're someone who only needs 8 gigabytes of RAM and 128 gigabytes of disk space is or, you know slower disk space because it has uh, less the less storage the SSD has the slower it goes uh, in general, that's a generalization, but uh, generally true. Uh, so you're asking for $600 more if you're someone who's okay with 8 gigs and 128. So making that jump over to an i7 is a 66% increase in price. It's a $600 more. So that's that's kind of steep, you know, especially if you're just if you're just looking to try to get into a Pro 7. Now, if you say 128 is way too small and you're 256, you're paying $300 more to step up to that i7, which is a 25% increase in, in price, which is a little bit more palatable. Um, but if you're someone who uh, wants 16 gigabytes of RAM, you're only looking at $100 to step up to the i7. So that's kind of our, that represents a 7% increase in price. And let's go ahead and look at what does the i7 versus the i5 actually get you in terms of performance. And does that performance warrant $600 more, or $300 more, or $100 more? So let's uh, scoot over to the performance delta. Um, so if you watch my channel, you know I'm the guy who like points a fan at the back of the surface to get maximum performance. I have not done that in my benchmark testing. Uh, for these numbers. I want to have real accurate figures for you guys so you can have it so you know that the numbers I'm giving you here are what you can expect to get without doing anything weird or crazy on your device. So um, that said, I only have the i7 in my possession. So my i5 figures are from the Windows Central review of the Surface Pro 7 i5. I'm relying on their benchmarking prowess where these numbers are ones that I did myself. So uh, let's go ahead and take a look. Um, Geekbench 5 single 1191 versus 1273. Uh, Geekbench 5 multi 4441. Anyways, I'll cut to the chase. I'll, I'll go ahead and load up that, that slide. So Geekbench 5, you've got a 7% improvement. And in the multi-core test, a 9.2% improvement. And on Geekbench 4, you've got a 7.5% improvement. In the multi, you've got 11.3% improvement. PC Mark 10, 
you pick up a 15% improvement, but that's because PCMark 10 does use some GPU accelerated uh, tests. Uh, but it's mostly it's mostly CPU, um, and so I've separated these are the CPU benchmarks, and these are the GPU benchmarks. Uh, so let's look over at the GPU benchmarks where we see a pretty big difference. So if you look at the Geekbench 5 compute, the i5 gets 7,613, where the i7, it kind of creams it. So <laughs> it it uh, has a 37% improvement, and 3D Mark Time Spy has an improvement of 85%. And you may be wondering, okay, well these these graphics are basically the same. Just one has 64 execution units, and the other one has 48. So if you have 64 divide it by 48, you should only have a 33% improvement maximum, and both of these figures are beating that 33%. So what's going on here? Well, we talked about the i5 not having a fan, a built-in fan, not some weird fan that I put on the back. Another, <laughs> it's passive. The i5 is passive, where the i7 has active cooling. I'm really enjoying my surface pen. So um, my theory is that's where this is, that's why we're seeing this performance delta because the i7 uh, in our testing we've seen it kind of hangs out anywhere from 15 to 25 watts depending on how fresh it is. Uh, my guess is the i5 is set to 10 to 15 watts because and probably closer to 10 watts and that's because it doesn't have a fan you know it's passively cooled so uh, Microsoft is going to lock that down so because it's being throttled the i7 comes out ahead in these GPU benchmarks so um, if we look at the sum of all these parts, we see that the average CPU advantage moving to an i7 versus an i5 nets you roughly a 10% performance increase for CPU-related functions. And the GPU advantage is a 61% advantage. So that's actually really huge. Um, I've in, in my performance testing of the i7, it's, it is a beast with the Surface Pro 7. Uh, those 64 execution units combined with a really good cooling solution really give it an edge in sustained uh, workloads. So, um, so we now know that we have kind of a 61% advantage in GPU capability and a 10% advantage in CPU capability. So let's go back and look at our, our price points here. So if you are just this guy, if you're looking at, you know what, I don't have a lot of money, I just want to get into a Surface Pro 7, um, I would recommend the Pro 7 over the Pro 6, even in the i5 version, because it's got USB-C, it has uh, Intel Wi-Fi, it's just better all around, the internals are completely redesigned. The i5 in the Pro 7 is actually outperforming in general the Surface Pro 6 i7 version. So the i5 Pro 7 is better than the Pro 6, sorry, <laughs> am I saying that right? The i5 Pro 7 is better than the i7 Pro 6. That's that's kind of hard to say. So if you're this guy, that $600 is, is a hard pill to swallow, but if you are a person who wants to use the GPU, that still could be viable. You're, you're gonna pay 66% more to get over here on the i7, but if you value GPU, if you're going to be using it for gaming or sustained uh, GPU workloads for whatever reason, it it's you, you're paying 66% more, but you're getting 61% more performance. So that may or may not be worth it. But if you're this guy who already needs the 256 and the 8 gig. The 25% more that you're paying is well worth it if you are going to utilize that GPU. If you are this guy right here, you just need to not buy the i5 and you need to go straight over to the i7. The 7% the extra in price 
is is well worth it to get the i7 version. So really what it comes down to is are you a person who is going to use the CPU or are you a person who's going to use the GPU heavily? Well, I guess you're always going to be using the, G the CPU, but are you going to be using the GPU? Do you want to play games? Do you want to do uh, compute workloads? Do you want to um, have an edge in certain applications that utilize GPU? Um, that's for you to decide, but do know that if you want that GPU, uh, improvement the i7 is a much better bet for you so um, I'm not gonna say that you have to get the i7 but it it's definitely a very good value proposition for the extra performance that you're getting and if you're already planning to get this range on the 256 16 gig you may as well step right over so that's as good as I can I can help you guys out. Um, it's always a personal decision, you know. Some people are only going to have this much to to spend, and that's still money well worth it. We're we're obviously getting gouged, especially in in these versions. Even the i7, we're getting gouged a little bit. But what are you going to do? Um, hopefully, uh, you should apply your 10% student discount if you can. And that should help ease the burden of <laughs> buying uh, a new Service Pro 7 device. So anyways, if this has been useful information to you, be sure to thumbs up, like, and subscribe. So thanks for watching my Surface Pro 7 performance video on the i5 versus the i7. We'll see you next time.